Right, everybody settle down. We are about to start. Hello. Well, welcome back to the additional council meeting, 7th of June. Just reconvened. Item number 7, 7.1, Council response to Tiatiaba Kifakarongutai Charitable Trust Review, page 6. Janice McDougall. Kia ora koutou through you, Mr. Mayor. Hello. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I'm very mindful that you've had a very long day already, um, and it is somewhat unusual to have a council meeting on a Tuesday afternoon, um, even more unusual for the guts of it to be getting started at nearly three o'clock in the afternoon. So um, with that in mind, I will do my best to find the right balance between um, giving these reports the, the um, introduction that they deserve, but also not spending hours introducing them um, so that there is plenty of time for you to um, ask questions and have your own consideration. Uh, I just want to acknowledge the representatives of Nahapu who are here in the room and may have some comments to make um, as you work through these items of business. So in terms of the report seeking um, uh, your adoption of a set of recommendations in response to a review of our partnership with Atiawa Ki Whakarangatai Charitable Trust, carried out by the Charitable Trust, um, as is set out in the paper, the Trust um, resolved to review its partnership with the Council and then, uh, having done that, also chose to withdraw from Te Whakameninga or Kapiti, um while they completed that review and uh, its recommendations were considered. Um, we've outlined in the paper the process that we've been through, having received the review, and I just want to um, make sure that I acknowledge what we have acknowledged in the paper, which is it has been a slow process at this end. Um, that has been a cause of frustration for Atiawa Ki Whakarongatai Charitable Trust. I want to make it very clear that we acknowledge that and are aware of the impact that that has had um, on uh, the relationship between the Trust and the Council at an operational level at least. That said, um, although there has been a delay in formally responding, um, the recommendations made by Atiawa, which I outlined in the report, have have influenced a changing approach within the Council. I think both at an operational and, if I may be so bold as to suggest, around at a governance level around this table too. Um, the, the report acknowledges, for a start, that um, what was a very poor situation in relation to capacity funding available for mana whenua to participate in the work of Council, uh, there was a significant increase um, approved within the long-term plan by you to address that point. Um, but, but partnership is about far more than the putia and um, I think uh, the findings of the review and the recommendations that were made have definitely influenced um, the way that we think about partnership at an operational level within the organisation. Um, I guess I would like to note that um, we have had conversations with Atiawa Ki Whakarongatai Charitable Trust about our proposed responses that we have put to you today for adoption. Um, and as is outlined in the paper, I think it's, it's really important that we acknowledge that there are three areas um, where, uh, at an operational perspective, the Council has a slightly different opinion to Atiawa Ki Whakarongatai about um, the right approach in responding to, to those specific findings. And those three areas are the membership of the Chief Executive Performance and Employment Committee, um, the membership of the Audit and Risk Committee, if we think about that in the context of three mana whenua partners, and then the last matter being the specific shape of the operational relationship um, or the mechanism that drives the operational relationship between Council, the organisation and uh, the Charitable Trust and their staff. Um, those are three areas of um, not quite full alignment um, in and amongst um, a lot of uh, other recommendations where there is good alignment between the, the recommendations made to you today by staff 
and the recommendations that were made as part of the Atiawa review. Um, it is uh, it is with the knowledge that there is more work to be done in particular around what the operational relationship looks like that we put this paper before you today. We've tried to be clear that um, we see that there is more work to be done and that in adopting um, the set of recommendations today, Council is playing an important um, part in the process to facilitate some of that work to continue in those conversations to be furthered. So with that in mind, I'm happy to leave, um, to leave my introduction of the report there and can take questions. Um, do we have Kahu online, Fiona? Okay, yeah, so we also have Kahu Ropata, um, who gives his apologies for not being able to be here in person today. He is sick, sheltering at home, like a number of us at the moment, um, but is available to answer questions, should you have any. Right, um, questions, and also I just flicked an email to all of you from Samantha, which may be relevant. In the meantime, anybody with questions? Council Coots. He's reading the letter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to forfeit reading the letter and my question time. Um, yeah, well, no, I'll tell you. I appreciate, um, I think Ms McDougall has partly answered this, but I think it's important to probably labour the point. There has been some comments around why now, um, this close to going into an election and so mm -hmm. forth. I think you alluded in your introduction um, the time that this, is, this has taken. Is it fair to say that um, it is not deliberate that it is now, that it certainly... Um, it would have been probably the preference of um, Te Atiawa and, and many of us that this had been done much earlier? Definitely a preference. Um, when, uh, when Atiawa presented its review to a group of staff and some of you um, uh, in late 2020, um, we were... S surprised isn't the right word. It wasn't something that we were anticipating having happened and, and clearly um, we were experiencing some significant workload pressure across the organisation um, and particularly in some of our people and partnerships group teams as a result of COVID and the increased welfare responsibilities and other bits and pieces that we had. So it certainly took longer for us to progress work on a formal council response um, than we would have liked. Um, and then since having presented that view um, to the Charitable Trust um, uh, coming up on a, nearly a year ago now. Um, again, um, not an easy time in terms of workload for either the Charitable Trust or the Council. We've had a number of a, attempts to, um, to have further conversation with the Trust to try and um, further, further progress some of the conversations that the paper notes we still have work to do. Um, I think there's really good intent on both sides um, for a range of reasons. Um, actually landing those conversations and making progress hasn't worked, but you know, certainly I was in um, conversation with a, with a member of the Charitable Trust Board this morning about um, a specific kaupapa where Council and um, the Charitable Trust will be able to do, I think, some really great work together. In our infrastructure area, we have frequent and um, you know, progressive conversations with, with Atiawa um, there is a lot of work still happening and still moving um, while we try to resolve some of these broader or higher level issues. Thank you. The next one is around the, um, you referred to the um, couple of areas where there wasn't alignment and one was around CPEC. I'm assuming this might be the email His Worship is referring to. Um, the question that I had was, given some of the comments from um, Atiawa in your review around some of the challenges um, around raising issues, which did involve the Chief Executive at the time, um, have we actually, have, have we got legal advice around the staff position or recommendation around not including iwi reps in CPEC? And I do note that in the report it also references some councils that do, so obviously it makes it clear that it's not impossible. So um, uh, the council officer position, as explained in the report, um, was formed on the basis of advice from our in-house legal team. Um, and so the the risk to the employment relationship that is outlined there um, was what uh, drove that advice. But I have encouraged the Mayor, and I do believe he has sought his own independent legal advice on that matter. 
I think I'm just about to read it. That's right. Um, if there are no other questions, I'm going to move um, recommendations A to G. Can I have a... Oh, Denise. Mm -hmm. Oh, Kirsten. <coughs> Kia ora. Uh, thank you for giving us an opportunity to um, comment on this. Um, <coughs> we did just uh, uh, let Janice know that um, we've read through the material and we have had some discussions over the last uh, 10 months about this. And um, while, while for us, um, actually, I'll step back. You know that for us, um, working together in meaningful ways and partnership is very important for us and we value that. Um, so while for us this doesn't go quite as far as, as we would like, we think it's we think it's a very good start and we individually are supportive of the proposal. We have just um, been advised though that um, Te Atiawa have some concerns about uh, the way in which the review or their involvement in the review or non-involvement in the review and also some concerns about um, who met with them during and as part of these discussions. Um, that was um, a direct you know, communication from um, Te Atiawa. This, this review has been a direct um, communication from Te Atiawa to KCDC. So we, you know, we encourage you to talk to them soon and get that worked out. Um, because we've um, been informed of, of those concerns, we do need to um, take some time to talk with um, Te Atiawa and Ngāti Tō, and we're looking to do that urgently. And each of the iwi groups are wanting to do that urgently. So we, we encourage you to, um, and then we will be back in touch with you formally to dis discuss this further. So informally and individually, we support the proposal and can't make a formal comment about it at this time. Thank you. Come to Hardy. Through you, Mr Chair. Uh, it's very, very interesting hearing from the Hafu around that, that um, they still are interested in, in talking with the other iwi in relation to this. Uh, look, I'm fairly supportive um, of um, this this particular uh, part that we're looking at with regards to response to Te Ate Awa. Um, uh, I am just a little bit concerned around uh, point nine on the um, appendix two, which um, talks to the remuneration structure, um, potentially um, of um, of uh, inclusion at the council table. Um, I just thought that was a little bit premature to be voting on that particular point, um, um, as it's really a prelude to um, the next next um, uh, point on the, uh, the next agenda item, as such. Um, I'm supportive of everything else. I'm just wary about point nine for the simple reason it links directly to the result of um, the next um, agenda item. Uh, it sort of it seems to me it might be something that's in there before um, we've actually made the decision about that governance structure. Uh, I don't know if that can be sort of uh, taken out, uh, looked at separately, or mm. um, or we, I'd be happy on advice or whether that links. If uh, we don't go ahead with the uh, next agenda item, um, then that's moot point, or um, is, is picked up in that way as such, if that makes sense at all. Right, no other questions? Yeah, uh, Janice, will make com um, some comments. Uh, I just wanted to address what I think are probably the concerns that lie behind the feedback that Nahapu has had from Atiawa. So um, uh, Atiawa um, uh, feel that in, um, in us putting this report up to you now um, uh, that they have not had sufficient opportunities to be able to um, inform the response that has come to you. Uh, and also um, that that the opportunity to be aware that this was coming now um, was something that they would have liked. Um, and that is Adiawa's perspective as I understand it um, and, and um, 
that that has been their perspective and their experience, and I'm not going to try and argue with that. Um, but I would like to point out that over a number of occasions since um, myself and members of the EWI Partnerships team met with representatives of the Charitable Trust to present um, our uh, proposed recommendations which, which have been put before you today. Since that meeting we have made on a number of occasions an attempt to have a conversation with Atiawa about this. Um, uh, in November last year the Mayor sent an invitation to Atiawa, actually all three iwi mana whenua, um, indicating that the council and the senior leadership team would welcome an opportunity to meet with each of the iwi to discuss partnership matters moving forward. Um, we have made multiple attempts um, this year to, um, to contact and have conversation with the Charitable Trust. Um, uh, we chose the position of putting this report to council um, despite not having been successful in getting around the table um, with Atiawa for further conversation because largely um, the position that we are putting to you today strongly supports the recommendations made by Atiawa in their review and makes it clear where there are areas that we know there is further conversation and more work required. It would be uncomfortable for us from a staff perspective to leave the Atiawa review um, lingering without having been formally tabled with you and formally responded to uh, before the end of this training for a new council to be able to have to then consider um, and, and form a position on. And I, I believe we've communicated that to Atiawa as being one of the reasons why we are keen to progress at this time. Similarly, for the, um, for the report that follows um, that seeks you, um, seeks uh, or recommends that you vary your governance structure. Again, we strongly feel that these are matters um, that uh, relate to things that have happened this year, uh, this trainium, sorry, and should be resolved with this council within this trainium. Thank you very much. Um, Oriwa. Red light. Can I clear? Um, I just wanted to add to Kirsten's comments because of, of some of the things that have occurred we've, we've only really been made aware of in the last 10 to 20 minutes. Um, you all understand that this is a relationship issue and if it, there was any sense of our informal support of this, it was in relation to our relationship with Aotearoa Ki Whakarongotai. But in saying that, um, we do three feel comfortable with formally supporting what is being proposed. The issue that you are dealing with is a relationship issue with Te Atiawa Ki Whakarungotai, and we would have to support that resolution process occurring with your team. That, that needs to happen. This is, this is a sense of things not happening in a timely manner and therefore you've got a response that you have. Uh, we will still meet with Ngāti Toa and Te Atiawa. We will share that we have um, said we support this. It's a start point in the go forward. We think it's a positive move. We're not sure that meeting with them would get the response necessarily they could get from you in this triennium. You know, they may be wanting more, um, but at this point we think this is a good start point and we are clear that it's not... Um, the end point as far as a true reflection of the partnership and each each group, Te Atiawa, Ngāti Toa and Ngā Hapo Ōtaki have um, our own danga tiratanga matters to deal with but I'm really clear you had two things on your table one is their submission and that should have been responded to and you've acknowledged that Janice and the second is a proposition that's an offer to the three organisations that proposition we can support. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, I often call him um, Your Honour, so I get it, it wrong all the time as well. Um, <laughs> I your, your, your answer then has just probably, um, I, I think it's answered my question as to what our way forward should be. Um, with the item on the table following the one that we're currently dealing with, is that something that we should be progressing uh, 
right now, or should we be waiting for an answer from our other partners? My, I'm, I'm assuming we should be progressing it, but I'd like some advice. Kia ora, no, I go to Kirsten because actually this is her voice at the table. Um, I, I wouldn't wait. I think the right thing to do is to advance it yourself. So they have um, clearly articulated their disappointment at the lack of engagement, and I don't think that necessarily is a fair reflection on what your goals and aspirations have been in that relationship. So if I were you, I would go and have that happen straight away. Thank you. Anybody else? Through you, Councillor Holiday. Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, look, I just wanted to clarify, Rob, oh, Councillor McCann, were you referring to, and just to make sure that um, you were both talking about the same thing, were you um, uh, talking in regards to what we're currently talking about, which is 7.1 on the agenda, Council response to Atiawaki Pakamangatai Charitable Trust Review? Rob, can I suggest that you are talking more in lines to 7.2, Mana Whenua representation within Council's governance structure? Would, um, just wanted some clarity on that. Please respond. Uh, yes, I was talking about 7.2 as the next step, and should we um, move forward with that? And the answer that I heard back was uh, yes, absolutely. So we did respond to two things quite clearly. One was that this issue of review, and the second was the proposal for iwi participation in government governance. So yeah. we were supportive of that proposal. Okay. Um, no other questions. I'm I'm moving. Pardon? You want to second this? Hurry up, somebody. Uh, Council Coates being on the Tifakamania meeting, I think you should. So I'm moving, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I, could I just make a comment on one of the recommendations, recommendation D, Councillor Halliday raised the issue. References to the appendices, appendix two within the report has a reference to um, basically the next paper in terms of that, as, as you mentioned, the nominating iwi membership of subcommittees. And we're, so we're just talking as to whether that sort of preempts the decision in the next paper. We can leave it up. Well, we, um, okay. across the board, it would be good to know that the governance body is supportive of yeah. the actions that have been proposed. It's, it's how we formalise the council's response at both the governance and operational level to the Atiawa review. If you're concerned that it I guess predetermines or gets a step ahead of the decisions that you're being asked to make in the next paper. Um, you, we could either reword that recommendation um, to reflect that. You could um, you could either um, uh, you could change approves for endorses, which is um, which is a little less um, like you are making a decision, or you could reword that to to. to that resolution to make it a little bit longer and note that at section uh, recommendation nine, whatever the wording is, um, note that that would need to be subject to um, you know, the paper that follows in the agenda, if you were concerned about that. But isn't it also possible to vote for A, B, C, skip D and go to G and that particular one will be managed by the next paper, 7.2? No, because only, um, only a subset of the proposed actions is managed by the next paper. Um, the, uh, there are a range of other actions that are, that are dealt with. If you are concerned about that, I would say that um, Sarah has some wording that we could use to, um, to, to so not you, make that decision now. Right. Can you suggest the exact wording, please? Yes. No, so we, we're just looking at it. We could amend that. Yeah. Yes, so we will, the team will just bring up on screen now some proposed wording that enables you to approve all of the actions except for 
um, except for the ones that relate to changing the governance structure, noting that that is the subject of a separate paper. Yes? Hmm. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Um, could we add, which is subject to, could we acknowledge that it's subject to another paper? Janet. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very uncomfortable with that wording because it implies that we don't approve Action 9. I mean, it's not as if you're not going to find something. Uh, yeah, but that says, that we're approving them all except nine. No, when you say except, which will be managed on the, the 7.2 agenda. If you add that, that should be fine. Janice. Sorry. Which is the subject of the next paper. Yeah. So, So if you changed approved to endorses and then added, which I think the team is trying to get up now, noting that the execution of Action 9 is the subject of a separate report. So you are, you are indicating support for it but not executing it because that requires a, a different paper. That. Oh, he's a bee. Okay. Any issues with that? That's fine. Martin, that's fine. Okay, so resolution A to G with the amendment to D has noted, I moved it, and Councillor Coates, you seconded it. Right of intro. Um, look, this has been a very long, long journey. Disrupted, of course, by, as the report says, the issue of the pandemic. But also I must mention that the issue is not just Tiatiawas wanting to take a more dynamic approach to what has been a 25-year relationship. Times have changed. Um, but that leadership that they've shown in terms of trying to refit this whole process of relationship, the treaty relationship, has also affected the other parties. We know that. So we have to be ex council and staff and councillors from the governance side had to be extremely careful. James knows that when you're sitting around Tifaka Meninga, the tensions, the issues, and trying to balance between all the parties has not been easy. But having said that, we have arrived at a very, very good situation. And of course, there are people who said, you know, why the sudden rush? Hello, if you pay attention to the reality of what's happening, the government, central government has put forward a whole list of legislation with shifting the relationship, the treaty relationship to a much higher plane um, the issue of co-governance is, is, is there, it's already been starting to be exercised. So there is a rush in that terms in that to get in front of this as quick as possible. And the new legislation, what they've done is put huge pressure on EV in terms of capacity to deal with this. Huge pressure. So yes, it is a rush, but there's a reason for that. So I urge you to support this. and. Um, the relationship with Tiatewa will continue. The relationship with the other uh, treaty partners, Nati Rangatira and Ngahapu Owataki will continue. And we've heard that say around this table today. So with that, open for debate. Councillor Elliott. Um, thank you for your introduction, Your Worship. Um, I'm afraid I won't be supporting 
either resolution 7.1 or 7.2 today simply because I've been around the table long enough to know that it is the prerogative of the incoming council to select their governance structure. It's a really important responsibility for them. Uh, it is also one that many of them are not quite experienced enough when first elected to sit at the table and make a decision without being swayed. For them to, to be able to make that decision without being swayed or bullied in any way by staff, management or others is really important. Um, I'm very dismayed that after two whole years of this paper, of this uh, problem, discussion, this breakdown of the relationship, uh, we were only had a response of any description brought to our table three to four weeks ago. Uh, we signalled straight away, many of us, that this paper simply was not ready to come to council for a decision. Um, we also signalled, some of us, that we wanted an urgent meeting, a uh, hui, for you to sit down with us and te Awa iwi. Kamatua, the other trust, the other parts of that, that iwi, the people, so that we could have the assurances that this was a resolution that they are happy with. It is about their voices being heard at the table. And you never organised that, Hui. So I will not be supporting this today. Although, in principle, I always look forward to and I always enjoy the massive contribution our iwi make at our table, and today has been an excellent example of that. Thank you, Councilor Goods. Look, I won't have a lot to say around this particular um, paper, but more on the next one. Um, what I would add is that um, having gone to the uh, initial hui with... Sure. Uh, Mahina Rangi uh, and His Worship the Mayor um, and Andre mm -hmm. at the time. Janet was there. Uh, I don't think it was at the initial one. Oh, it was okay. in Elizabeth Street. Mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. No, no. no. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll sort that offline. <laughs> Um, first, before the presentation was actually um, compiled and then presented to elected members and so forth, um, there was a lot of discussion around the time uh, around the withdrawal um, of Atiawa from Te Whakarongatai in, in a negative sense. Um, but um, in, in going to that meeting with Andre and Mahinarangi and being presented the, the early rough findings of the review, uh, it was exciting. I saw it as an opportunity. I saw it as a huge opportunity to work together uh, in true partnership, um, to be able to deliver uh, in a more meaningful way with a deeper understanding. And we saw a, a, a terrific example of that today um, with the um, our iwi representatives here with us this morning around our briefings um, and providing a much richer input into the process. So um, again, I'll have more to say on the next paper. Um, but I certainly saw this as an exciting opportunity. Uh, I didn't see it as a, as a negative. And I know from my time around Te um there are ongoing discussions around that committee in itself and uh, Atiyah were returning to the table at some point. Um, so um, this is uh, not the end, it's only just the beginning. Councillor Holbrook. I'm not sure if it was the initial meeting, but I went to a meeting at the offices of the trust um, and our senior staff were there and the mayor and councillor Kurtz and myself were there and we had a lengthy um, presentation that day that was you know might have been rough findings but it was certainly it had a sense of huge occasion about it and I could really sense the reset that was happening within our relationship and the expectations too on us really coming to the party and then that flowing into the long-term plan and our commitments to extra resourcing and capability funding through that process. So I just want to thank um, particularly Mahina Rangi um, Baker, who put such a huge amount of work personally into this, and the rest of the people who input it into it, because it, it's certainly an outstanding piece of work and gives us a great foundation to um, to move forward with our relationships, just not just with Te Atiawa, but with all of our iwi in the district. And it's great to have Nahapu Otaki here today 
and speak to their support. I think that's really powerful. And it's good to see how, it's kind of the next paper, but just while I'm on that, good to feel how it feels having three iwi at the table. I think it's fantastic. So without pre predetermining myself on the next paper. <laughs> um, yeah, so re really pleased to support this today. And um, I probably won't speak much to the next paper because um, I've kind of said what I'm going to be thinking about that too. So um, just really a, a really exciting day today as we build and reset our relationship with our iwi. Councillor Provano. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, um, so I certainly uh, support the intent of um, of the recommendations here. But as you said, um, Mr. Mayor, this is rushed. I believe there is more work that needs to be done. And just even today, um, new information has, has been provided that has been unknown. My concern is that there is more information that we know, need to know before we make this good decision. So um, I think um, it should be, we need to, we certainly need to relook at this in the next training. And so I will not be supporting um, these recommendations in this paper. Councillor McCann. I just want to say I do not feel bullied, um, but I have been swayed by good logical arguments and the idea that we have constructive relationships around the table. Uh, and I'll say more um, in the next paper, but. I will be supporting this. Come to holiday. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think uh, Rob's not now hit the nail on the head quite uh, succinctly. It's been fantastic having you around the table today. Um, but we'll be picking that up a little bit more in the, the next paper. But how I see this paper is, um, as was pointed out, is a, is a good solid step in the right direction with regards to the relationships that we have with our EV partners. I, I look at this as being predominantly an operational response with regards to capacity. Um, but there's also the linkage there with governance uh, and building that relationship. Um, I'd like to ask or ensure uh, council officers that um, you know we do have um, a good linkage coming into the next triennium with regards to the induction process and having more of an understanding about the relationship that we have with um, with Ely and Māori in our district, uh, so that we can get um, a tone going coming into the next triennium. Uh, I will be supporting this this particular um, uh, this particular agenda item. Um, uh, as I see it as um, a positive step that's uh, assisting uh, with regards to the capacity issues uh, that are going to be forthcoming and um, and I see it as an evolving uh, evolving um, scenario which we all need to be sitting down and uh, and discussing. I hear with envy um, Councillor Halborough's uh, or Deputy Mayor Halborough's experience with uh, getting a full understanding of that. I would have liked that as well. And uh, I think even the conversation you just had highlighted the fact that this was the last minute to you. These things need to change. Uh, this to me is the process to help that change. So uh, I will be um, supporting this moving forward. Um, thank you. Uh, first of all, just apologies for the uh, rather disjointed participation in this meeting. I've gone from... Uh, and the senior member on your left. Yes, yes, but potentially a future councillor there. <laughs> but I've gone from uh, listening to the meeting at the school pickup to in the car to now and here, so the wonders of mo modern technology. Um, but I just want to say I'm supporting this, and I think part of the reason that it really does bring to mind, you look at the dates when this all kicked off all the way back in uh, 2017 and here we are in June 2022 um, and as Janice was saying earlier kicking this down the can for another the next council to deal with I think getting a bit silly sticking it across the three trainiums so I think what we do by accepting the this report and the recommendations in it is actually put our relationship on a good foot going forward for the next council to pick up and the issues that have been highlighted um, from the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Halliday. Uh, those are things so the, the new council can hit the ground running and get those, the relationship not only with Te Atiawa but Aaviwi off to the best possible start for that incoming council, especially given the scale of change that's coming for the sector. And a bit like Councillor McCann said, um, you know, it takes a lot to bully me. I think you'll find I'm, <laughs> I'm not afraid of a fight when I find one. Uh, but I think, you know, Te Atiawa's had some really forefront feedback 
for council in terms of the relationship, and I think that's largely been taken on board, and obviously that's been reflected in the recommendations we'll be having coming back in the next report, so I'm happy to support this. Councillor Hanford. Yeah, kia ora, also really happy to be supporting this and yeah, to be having this discussion today, but also an understanding that there's and there has been a lot of mahi, especially by Te Atiawaki Whakarongotai, to get us to this point. So just to, to thank to thank them and also as Councillor Holbro has said, to thank specifically Mahi Narangi Baker um, for their mahi in undertaking this review and bringing some really tangible recommendations to the te apu, to the table. Um, and I think from my perspective, it's really important for us to not only respond to this review, but to also continue to develop a partnership through which we can understand how we can better thrive both at a operational but also a governance level um, to better fulfill our role as a treaty partner and continuing to be learning what that looks like and yeah ways in which we can build capacity to make that happen um, on both kind of ends of the partnership so ensuring funding for capacity building is obviously crucial and something that i think should remain a high priority and um, yeah, really, really glad to see how staff have recommended that we we respond to uh, the actions through through the review, and I think it's a really important kind of stock take of of where our partnership with Tiatia Kifakarongotai is at, and obviously in prompting some some changes across how mana whenua are represented at the governance level, which I think is also duly needed. So I hear some of the concerns that have been mentioned by fellow councillors but I agree with Councillor Compton wholeheartedly that this is you know if we if we want to set this precedent we have to set this precedent if we want to be um, be good partners we have to respond to you know the way in which our, our partner is ultimately wanting us to respond and it's about being agile and, and a responsibility to that partnership and so yeah I'm, I'm fully in support of of the recommendations in front of us right thank you very much um nobody else write a reply I suppose the message is very clear for those who say you know we should be waiting for the next um, triennium that will happen in any case the review will come but in the meantime are we going to just wait uh, when we have said that we have waited too long it just is uh, oxymoron that's not a bad word it just says there's confusion um, what I'm saying, therefore, is time to roll up your sleeves. But I'm quite confident that the number of people around this table will remain the same, or largely the same. And therefore, the experience that you have by rolling up your sleeves and getting down to the mahi will be really good, so that uh, the next time it starts with a good, really good start. So with that, um, recommendations A to D, A to G, with the amended D, Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Coates. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Can we have a sign of those on Zoom? We've got Councillor Pravanov voting no and Councillor Elliott voting no and Sophie Hanford for. Um, and, and an abstention from Councillor Randall. Okay, Does, um, so it's carried unless someone wants a division, I don't think so. So it's carried, thank you very much. Um, Your Worship, um, Councillor Elliott has called for a division on Zoom. Councillor, do you want to take it? Um, my mistake. Yeah, well you can still ask for a division after the vote. So, okay, all those in favour? Go, Sean. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, in favour, Councillor McCann, Councillor Holborough, those worship the Mayor, Councillor Coots, Councillor Buswell, Councillor Halliday, and Councillor Compton. In online. And sorry, uh, Councillor Hanford. And those against? Uh, Councillor Elliott, Councillor Pravanov, and an abstention from Councillor Randall. Thank you. Um, item 7.2, Manafano representation within council governance structure. Janice. Thank you. Once again, through you, Mr Mayor. Um, 
uh, in bringing this paper to you, we um, recommend that you make changes to the governance structure uh, for the remainder of this triennia to enact um, the recommendations that you have adopted in the previous paper that relate to your governance structure. Um, Council has obligations to mana whenua and to Māori under Te Tiriti o Waitangi, the Local Government Act and other key legislation. Um, uh, we, more importantly in many ways, have a long-standing partnership with iwi, uh, Atiawa ki Whakarangatai, Ngāri Toa, Rangatira and Ngāti Raukawa via Ngāhapu o Ōtake uh, and that partnership is Te Whakameninga o Kapiti. Um, uh, we have been engaging with our iwi partners for some time, as you have acknowledged in your comments on the previous paper, around what, uh, how our partnership can be strengthened and what its future shape moving forward will be. And I note that um, from the last Te Whakameninga meeting, there was an action taken by the Interim Chair of Te Whakameninga to convene a hui a iwi uh, to discuss next steps on a review of Te Whakameninga o Kapiti. I acknowledge that because I want to also then make the point that that is separate to the considerations that are put in front of you today in this report. Um, what this report makes recommendations on is changes that you as a governing body can make to your governance structure to allow for a stronger voice for mana whenua and decision making around this table. Um, it's a reflection of, um, I think, um, a journey and progress that you as a group of councillors have made this training. And I think no better is there, a, is there an example of that progress than um, seeing the way that mana whenua values, perspectives and priorities have been reflected in the strategic direction set by you through the long-term plan. Um, and, and the opportunities uh, inherent in these recommendations for those perspectives to be reflected in the decisions that relate to um, the content of that plan and all of the other activities seems like a wonderful next step. Um, the paper clearly outlines um, a lot of the technical matters in relation to changing your governance structure. It outlines that there um, is an impact uh, on quorum and other uh, technical details. Um, but hopefully the paper has also um, painted a picture of the significant opportunity that the decisions we've put in front of you today represent. Um, it is, uh, um, I think, a, a proud moment for staff that have been involved in um, bringing this report to you to see it on the table in front of you. At an operational level, um, we have, um, I think, made significant progress but we still have a very long way to go in being able to work in partnership with mana whenua in a way um, that meets the aspirations of council and mana whenua. Um, uh, but we see um, the fact that this paper is on the table for you as a significant, as a significant progression and one um, that we are excited to bring to you today. So with that, I'm now happy to take questions, as is Sarah Waddy, our Governance and Legal Services Manager. Right, open for questions. Going once, Council Goods. Oh, what do I have to go first, here, so. <laughs> Look, um, more of a technicality around strategy and ops, um, and it's ironic because there's comments out there around this whole thing around giving iwi voting rights. We already have a rep, um, a position available on strategy and ops for iwi for voting rights. Will that be, does that get risks? There's nothing that actually mentions that particular position being rescinded. So um, there's a position for Māori, so it's not specific to mana whenua, it's a position for a Māori representative around the Strategy and Operations Committee. That hasn't, uh, that is allowed for in the governance structure. It hasn't been filled this trainium. Uh, and yes, um, that would be revoked as part of the changes that we are asking you to adopt today. Um, and while I have my microphone on, can I just acknowledge that I omitted to um, refer to several areas in my introduction that related to comments from Mr Mitchell in public speaking time, and I did say that we would cover that in the report. So um, just to acknowledge that uh, there are no consultation requirements for a governance um, structure decision like this. It is totally within 
um, uh, the delegations of this council to make decisions on its governance structure. Um, in terms of responsibilities to Māori, uh, more broadly, uh, the matter on the table today is around representation for mana whenua, representation for Māori and a voice for Māori is dealt with through other mechanisms. Um, uh, and I think the other points that Mr Mitchell has made I have covered off, so I'll leave it there. Any other questions? No. Have you got another question? So I appreciate we've had some discussions and um, briefings around the CPEC position um, and it's unfortunate as elected members have just received the advice in the course of this meeting um, that has been given to the Mayor's office around um, CPEC, I haven't had time to read it in detail. Understanding that the Council can't bind an incoming Council to any future decisions, although you, we do kind of, I guess, lead an example. Um, and acknowledging that there's further discussions that need to go on, is there could there be um, further advice around uh, position on CPEC for iwi members leading into the new triennium? How, how could that be managed? If I guess we're saying with to do this now with the advice that we've just received today as elected members, to me seems uh, not good decision making but equally acknowledging we don't have time within this training to continue that discussion on. You could resolve not to um, uh, make a decision on that today, which would leave it hang hanging, or you could choose... Um, uh, so you could, you could leave that recommendation, I guess, to lie on the table, that specific recommendation. Or you could resolve not to do it, but um, undertake further... Um, further work to look at the matter and then make a recommendation to the incoming council and actually one of the pieces of work that Sarah and the team is doing at the moment is looking at what mechanisms you as um, a council could use to make a set of recommendations to the incoming council if that was mm. what you wanted to do um, and, and that would certainly be one of them but Sean may I'll, have yeah. other comments to add. <laughs> oh, no, I was just going to say so basically what um, Jennison said there, other than taking it forward in terms of advice to the, to the new council would be the second recommendation you suggested there, rather than leaving that recommendation on the table. And then that would be supported by further advice with regard to the legal implications or how we might better make that work. Partly what I'm asking is because the mechanism for EWI to provide feedback in terms of their relationship and their satisfaction is different to the other feedback around KPIs, so it is simply, you know, and when I when I look back to the feedback provided in the review, which directly talks about the relationship with the chief executive, so I don't want to get into debate, but I just want to give staff the signal around, you know, I think it's important to look at that further, uh, and if you don't have um, iwi reps in the CPEC, then then if not, what is the mechanism for that feedback? Because it currently, I'd say, it was in inadequate. Um, so I look, I'll leave it in your hands mm. in terms of whether it lays on the table or whether it asks for further. I work. just just there's a possibility that the audit risk committee, which includes a risk matrix for Maori and treaty um, issues, may come up with that. But I see the point that you're raising, and also if you consider uh, put it or yeah. have um, one representative, but it's easy for them because they've got one. Maybe. Yep. Um, I'll save the rest for debate, but because I'll, I'll have a little, little bit more to say on that one. Um, Kim. Kia ora. Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through you, as, as you can imagine, being a Otaki Community Board member, um, point 19 is of interest to me with the membership of Community Boards Limited under the Local Electoral Act, and so there's no provision there to actually have a mana whenua represent representative on the Community Board. Just wondering if Janice could expand slightly on that, on how, is there a process to actually change that? Is that a central government change? By, by that smile, I think I know the answer then. Um, and short of asking for Naha for Taiki to put a represent up, representative up for election, um, is there any way that we can get representation on the community board? I actually will um, throw to Sarah to answer the specific legal part of that question, but may then make some comments myself about non-legal um, avenue. Thank you.
Kia ora. Um, so it is a statutory limitation, so you're not able to appoint uh, mana whenua reps to a community board with voting rights like you can to council committees and subcommittees, so similar similar to council, you're not able to appoint a um, an iwi rep or a mana whenua rep with voting rights. Um, there is a restriction around uh, appointed members and the number of appointed members um, to that, and we could take, we can have a look at that and whether that's a possibility for to, to appoint someone additional. I think, I think the answer off the top is that you are not able to determine it set by the, repre um, re the representation model, um, but we can take that on notice and, and double check whether you could appoint a, a mana whenua rep without voting rights if, if you wanted additional representation, but I don't think it's possible. But you can have uh, appointed members from the community who have special skills. Yes, that's you the thing that, I would like to check. That's just, the one that you could yeah, use. Yeah, I'm, I just want to look at the Act and make sure that is possible. Okay. Right. Um, anybody else? Martin. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I just have one question I'd like some clarity on. Um, we Can someone explain? Me the difference between um, Atiawaki Whakarongatai Charitable Trust and Atiawaki Whakarongatai. Uh, are you okay? Yep. There you go. Sounds like Kahu wants to have a go. Kahu. Kia ora mai tātou. I te tuatahi me mihi ki o koutou kei o kutua hine. Toko tūru hare mai ne ki te tautongi te kaupapo te rā. Uh, e mihi nui me ngā whakaaro ko puta mai ki te tepo O tira ki a koe te tia mana E kuru te ngā koe O tira te ngā koe te kei a koe kau nihera A quick answer to the, to the question uh, The charitable trust is the mandated iwi authority uh, To deal with government Te atu te awa ki whakarungotai Are the people that uh, the charitable trust represents and all machinations to do with government. That was about as short as I could hope to help. Thank you, Kahu. Councillor Compton. Uh, thank you. Through the Mayor, I was curious as to whether there have been any discussions with uh, iwi partners about pursuing what Environment Canterbury has or is currently doing with their local bill that's just been reported back from Select Committee about with our appointing um, Naitahu reps to as full council, uh, sorry, the ability to vote and fully participate in full council members down there. Have we had those discussions or it's sort of baby steps? Baby steps is a nice way to describe it. We have not had a conversation with any of our iwi partners about the potential to um, try and move legislation through Parliament on this topic. Um, if that was the will of this table and our partners, we would, of course, um, have that conversation. Councillor McCann. Well, thank you. Through you, Mr Mayor. Um, could you, um, Janice, explain what limitations we have as a council over further uh, later councils in terms of membership and, and the like? Uh, the fact that this council can't bind um, a future council in terms of decisions around the governance structure. It's a requirement under the Local Government Act, I believe, that each council resolves its own governance structure. Is that correct, Sarah? So just playing that out a little bit, the decision we're making is for the next few months and then a potentially a new council could reject the decisions that we have made around the representation and the funding of that, or will the funding be contracted in a way that protects that funding for a period of time? The funding exists within an operational budget and is um, executed under the delegations that staff have. So you, your answer, in plain English, was that that funding is protected for a period despite the fact that a, a future council could um, change the delegations? Yes, so um, uh, through the current annual plan process we have made provision within the budget for the funding that is required um, to implement 
the governance structure changes that are proposed to you today. Um, a future council could, of course, resolve to change that budget um, as part of an, uh, a future annual plan process, but it is currently included in the budget ongoing. Right. Um, doesn't seem to be any other questions, so I'm going to move um, recommendations A to G. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Coates. Right of intro. I just need to re say what I said from the last paper that we passed. This is a significant step for us. Yes, it's late, but it's never it's better late than never, so to speak. And the point is we are on a journey. Each step is an iteration. We are heading in an unexplored area for us, a tremendous step forward. And to tell you the truth, this is happening right, right across the country, where councils, mayors, chief executives, councillors are trying to get grips, staff members are trying to get grips to what's happening. But in this council, things have already started to happen. If you look at the engagement that's been happening in the last few months with Mana Fenwa, it's been a tremendous amount of work that's been happening. You talk about co-governance, it's already happened when you look at the stormwater management framework, um, which underpins your whole development Side, your environment and everything. It's already starting to happen. So on the governance side, we are just opening the door, so to speak, for a better interface with our treaty partners. And more is yet to come. So with that, I urge you, even those who, uh, who have been reluctant before, to say, yes, we will support this move. Thank you. Open for debate. Councillor Compton. Um, thank you for your, thank you, your worship. I was about to say your honour, um, picking up bad habits from across the table. But for me, I was called I, a bishop before, so that's why. <laughs> I don't know if that's moving up in the world or not. <laughs> um, for me, I think there's a few things that are important to highlight in this. And the first of all is that local government is a creature of statute, and that is that we are created by the Crown via Parliament as an expression of its sovereign, sovereignty through legislation. So ultimately, Whatever commitments the Crown enters into, whether that's with overseas countries or whether it's with um, Hapu and Iwi locally, um, those are ultimately commitments that flow through to us in local government because we only exist because Parliament has willed us into existence as an expression of its sovereignty. Um, and that's, for me, ultimately where this sits because the Crown in 1840 has essentially signed a piece of con a contract with Mana Whenua, um, and they've done a fairly poor job, that's a polite way of putting it, um, but they've done, you know, they've, they've done a terrible job of honouring their commitments in that treaty in the um, nearly two centuries since it. Um, now, the way that local government has addressed that has been fairly poor as well, and councillors heard earlier today about some of the ways that past councils have behaved in relation to Mana Whenua, um, and that's a story that I guarantee is repeated all across Aotearoa. And, you know, I think as a country we've been on a journey. I think as local government we've been on a journey. You look back to Kapiti was seen as being ahead of the curve in the 1990s when we signed a formal partnership with our local iwi. But what was necessarily right in 1990 doesn't necessarily hold over to being right in, you know, nearly 30 years later in 2022. And I think we've seen that the, uh, the winds of change have been blowing through local government over the last few years. Uh, Wellington City Council, last April, they voted to appoint Mana Whenua representatives, just as we're doing now, to their subcommittees. And I'm just getting Pokemon commentary next to me, which you will be quiet about, won't you? <laughs> um, yeah, so Wellington City Council voted to have Mana Whenua reps, just as we're doing. So they did that last April. Uh, Environment Canterbury, as I mentioned, they are actually pursuing to put, uh, effectively put back in place the Naitahu representatives across their council that they had previously. Uh, and that's a big change. We've seen the Māori Wards discussion be able to be reopened, and this council, on the advice of our iwi partners, uh, decided not to go down that path, and we respected their decision on this. And I think this is an opportunity for us to actually, you know, as I said, it might be baby steps in terms of our partnership with Iwi, but it's going in the right direction. Um, and I think that uh, sort of 
further to the question I asked earlier about whether we had had those discussions about whether we wanted, whether we had talked to Iwi about if they wanted us to pursue the Environment Canterbury path of changing the Local Government Act to allow us to have Iwi representatives as full voting members of the full council. Um, given we haven't had that, those discussions, I think it would be presumptuous of me to go down that course today and try and table a recommendation for us to do us. But I, you know, I think that is a challenge for whether it's something that gets brought up in the rest of this term, whether it's something for the new council to look at, or it could be ultimately something that the Future for Local Government Commission actually solves for us and amends the Local Government Act or proposes an amendment to it so councils don't have to try and change the law every time we want to do something. Um, and sort of finally, you know, we heard earlier about uh, a public speaker was talking about that we hadn't consulted with the public on our governance structure, what we're proposing today. You know, we don't consult with the public when we set the governance structure at the start of the triennium. Um, it's one of the few powers that is one of the few areas where the governing body of this organisation is allowed to be flexible, is allowed to be responsive, is allowed to move quickly. And we've seen it down the road in Wellington City Council that actually they've twice amended their governance structure this triennium. They did it once in response to a review that was into uh, issues that their council was having and they sort of realised that the structure they adopted at the start wasn't working so they amended it and moved on. And then as I mentioned before last April where they actually said, you know what, we need to lift our engagement and our partnership with Mana Whenua so we're going to have their representatives on our committees and subcommittees. Um, so you know, we're not, we're not necessarily trailblazing but we're definitely up towards the front of the pack I think in putting this forward today and I think it's definitely the right direction for us to go and I'd like to see us go further and faster but uh, that's, you know, I think we've got to have those discussions with our AUE partners first before we go down go down that route to make sure they're comfortable with pushing the walker out that far. So I'm very happy to support this, this today and I look forward to the work that we'll be undertaking from July onwards. Thank you, um, Council Holiday. Through you, Mr Chair. Um, Firstly, I'd just like to say I'm not very comfortable about having this general conversation in the public arena. Um, I think um, personally that this has been not good decision making or, uh, around this and I'm concerned that um, not enough workshopping has gone into it from a governance level. Uh, the, previous, the previous agenda item was about resourcing and supporting at an operational level with regards to um, participation. I'm in regards to um, how we move forward at a governance level, to me there needs to be more conversation about this and how we're going about it. Uh, also, I do take um, the submitter that um, was here earlier in the day, I hit some key points that I was uh, interested in as well, but also in regards to the conversations we've had today um, of, of people not being aware of what's going on. Um, how we're going about it as well, um, I note that um, we're going to be uh, changing our governance structure. I think three years, three months out from the end of the triennium, um, I don't consider that, again, good decision making. Uh, considering, the, in my opinion, the lack of conversations at a governance level that we've had around this. Um, I will give an example: is that we're going to be changing uh, number seven and number eight in our governance structure, and these two um, these two um, paragraphs, if you like, talks to engaging with Matawaka, which has not been done in this triennium it's now going to be removed and I don't find that acceptable at all uh, in regards to my, um, my situation. Um, I appreciate that we have, uh, are engaging with our EWI partners but we are supposed to be also engaging with Māori at a, at a wider level and how does that look? I don't know, we haven't had those discussions. Um, I have got a whole pile of things that I could talk to on here um, but I won't. Um, I think, um, in a nutshell, I'd be more inclined to want to leave this on the table. I would like to have more conversation with our partners, and I would um, like to put recommendations to the incoming council so that they are up to speed with the um, conversations that are being had or give them uh, help with regards to the decision-making process. But uh, I won't be supporting this moving forward for those reasons, uh, and because I think um, we need uh, more conversation and more discussion uh, in this space. Councillor Hanford. Gotta just <clears throat> just one thing to to mention, which I probably could have brought up in question time. So apologies. Um, recommendation A one point one says July twenty twenty one. I'm guessing that should be twenty twenty two. I don't know if that's been been picked up, but just probably something to amend before we look to pass um, or look to 
yeah sign off on the recommendations fingers crossed uh, and I am definitely in support I think in seeing how much value our UWI partners were able to add around the table this morning in the discussion and um, looking to further enhance our decision making processes and the ways in which we work together we know that Matauranga Māori brings with it huge amounts of intergenerational thinking which is also deeply needed I believe in the in the current climate that we're in the midst of and yeah we have so much to learn and yeah we have so much to learn from the Matauranga that our iwi partners can bring to the table and can use to to feed into decision making so I think it's just it's yeah a really important step and as Councillor Compton said it's a you know it's a step in the right direction and going further and faster is definitely the the direction and the the speed at which I think we should go um but I'm yeah I'm really confident that this is this is the right way of of us moving with this partnership because it reflects yeah the the will and the desire of our partners so yeah 100% in support Councillor McCann Kia ora. thank you Mayor um I would certainly like to say that I'm supporting uh, this um, recommendation, and I am. And I, I think it's just really important to reflect in anyone's life what a partnership looks like and how to move forward. I, I note that I'm a latecomer to marriage, um, but if I don't have my partner around while we're discussing things and I make a decision, it's invariably I find the wrong decision. And whether I'm being facetious in the argument or not, you make poor decisions when you don't have your partners around and treat them as equally as possible. When we are better informed, we make better decisions. It does not mean that we will always agree. But I noticed uh, when we've been trying to move the housing discussion along that not having our partners around the table was absolutely to the detriment of our general understanding from both sides and finding uh, solutions. And had we been further along uh, with this discussion, I think there would have been a whole lot less angst and we would be further along with housing solutions as one particular example. So I wholeheartedly encourage councillors to support this new way of working and it shouldn't be new. It's only new because we are so slow to adapt to change. Um, and that sometimes, um, the way I remember this is that when I, first came to this region as a seven-year-old boy, it was called Pram. It was a white town, um, a white beach town, should I say. I came back as a, as a young man with my partner, and I said, and it was called Paraparaumu, and I asked her, you know, I've been somewhere around here called Pram. I wonder where it is. <laughs> People should be embarrassed about how slow it is for us to pick up and move to a new way of doing things. And I've really enjoyed having um, iwi discussion and knowledge around the table as opposed to not having it and we need to fully embrace what comes with that and that means decision making and playing a full role in that not just a tokenism um, which New Zealand is moving beyond. Thank you. Councillor Holborough. Thank you. I, I just want to just briefly come or come really look forward to look backward to look forward and just think about how um, front footing this our council was 27, 28 years ago setting up our partnership with iwi and I sat on that committee for six years and it worked really well. You know we used to bring um, items to the agenda. The three iwi would go away and talk amongst themselves, then it would come back to the committee. It wasn't quick, but it was reasonably effective. And in our last district plan, where we had iwi engagement right from the start, I just read we had 25 meetings with iwi. Um, so there's, it's, it's, been, it's been a while, and as Councillor Coots pointed out before, we already have in our, our representation arrangement the facility to have an iwi member on our committee of the whole and when that was set up there were two committees of the whole so we had two different representatives sitting on those two committees so this isn't this isn't breaking totally new ground for us it's just recognizing that the arrangement needs to change over time as arrangements with our three iwi change 
and the way they would like to be represented around our council table. And we've got plenty of room. <laughs> the more the merrier, I say. So I just think it'll just be, uh, it's just going to be incredible having that input and I really look forward to it. Um, I would like to see it extended to the Chief Executive Performance Review Committee as well, but I um, accept that we don't have quite enough advice around that at the moment. And there are probably two opportunities to come up, coming up to discuss that further. The first will be the, the appointment of our new Chief Executive, and the second will be the setting of the representation arrangements with the incoming Council. So I'm happy with this arrangement for now, but I um, <coughs> certainly look forward to talking about that within our arrangements as well. Councillor Coates. I'm trying to think of what Rupini would say, whether he was sitting here. <laughs> and I think what he would say is, if you look behind you, you have um, a reason, another document to consider when we're considering what we're considering today. Um, and that document carries a lot more weight. Um, he'd probably say a lot more than that and, uh, and probably a lot more stronger than what I've said. But uh, I, I think that the uh, point remains valid um, in that, and as Councillor Compton has said, um, our government is going uh, in a direction around uh, stronger partnerships with our treaty partners. Uh, we have seen on numerous occasions the benefit in doing so. Uh, and even today, hearing examples where, uh, through the lack of knowledge and relationship with iwi, we have seen urupa being built on within our communities, at an extreme uh, example. Um, look, at my 15 years as an elected member, and in my last year, um, as many of you have, I've seen a lot. And sadly, what that has uh, become a number of uh, very racist emails that I've gotten uh, over the years and more recently, particularly around um, the Three Waters discussion. Um, and it's, you know, I'd say it's a sad part of the job. And why I raise that is um, for those that have concerns about the decision today, my response to them has been, what are you scared of? You know, what are you actually scared of around having these, uh, our partners, these representatives around the table? Because the only thing that I've ever seen from uh, representatives that we've had at the table is a real care, um, a genuine care and concern for the whenua uh, and for the people. Um, well, I don't see self-serving people looking at their own interests. I have seen that from elected members, um, but I have not seen that in my time as an elected member from our um, iwi partners. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm aware of the concerns from people within the community around co-governance and, and stronger relationships with iwi and giving them more powers, as people say. Um, and as Māori myself, you know, I could say that I'm biased, but for someone that has lots of friends that are non-Māori, I don't share those same concerns. I, I see a, um, I think I used the word earlier, a richness uh, a, a, a deeper understanding of Te Māori um, through that partnership. Uh, and look, we talked earlier, or, or some members talked earlier, around delaying this. What an opportunity to have people like this sitting around the table through your induction and helping you understand through that induction, rather than bringing them on potentially three or four months into a new training and then having to, after you've already built a team, add some people to the team. So from my perspective, and we've discussed this, or some of us have, offline, it brings a real richness um, to the elected members' opportunity through that induction process, starting as a team. And we talked about engaging iwi early. In this example, starting the new trainium with your partners around the table, going through induction together, understanding the finances, understanding annual plans and long-term plans, but also understanding all things Māori as well through that and where you don't know something you have someone to turn to and say actually can you help me understand this so I, I see that as a real benefit um, as um, Ms McDougall has said this discussion has been going on for quite some time now so for me to delay any further is only adding insult to injury um, for those um, that have commented in terms of well maybe we need to do this and maybe we need to do that and there is other things that we need to do for me, that's actually in some ways saying to Atiawa, 
oh, okay, the, the, the 12 to 18 months worth of work that you've done, you've missed some things, actually, um, you know, you've got some recommendations in the review there, but we think we need to take a little bit more time and do a little bit more work, and, and maybe you haven't covered everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for tweaking around the edges around things like CPEC and so forth. I think that discussion needs to be had. But I think that we need to accept the review for what it is. You know, um, I use Rob's analogy. It's a little bit like his, his wife telling her what she feels and then him telling her, I think you got some of that wrong. I'm not too sure how well that would go, Rob. And so in this instance, I think um, they've done the work. They've done the mahi. Um, we've received that. We've responded to that. And I think, as I said earlier, the journey has only just begun. But um, I'm certainly proud of the fact that I'll leave um, this role knowing that at least in the last three to six years, we have advanced a lot of areas um, around not only our partnership, around papakainga, hopefully around housing provisions and so forth, other work that we've done there, um, around the social space in terms of um, social investment and so forth. So um, the other thing I... Just, I looked at my notes here. Also, just want to mention um, through the Martin Jenkins review, uh, I had the support of VWE in bringing that review to council. Uh, and it's pleasing to see that the Martin Jenkins review is not only referenced in the report, but also aligns with some of the findings from Atiawa as well. And so, you know, I only hope that this discussion keeps going on um, as we look to close out the findings of both those reviews, the Martin Jenkins one and the Atiawa um, review. But um, yeah, I'm incredibly proud of this decision today. I, I hope other elected members that haven't spoken support it. Uh, and I thank um, Atiawa for taking the steps that they did to um, do the review. But equally, um, the, the last thing that I'd say is I also um, want to acknowledge the fact that we've extended it. Atiawa did the review. We could have come back and said, hey, we'll, we'll respond to that, to Atiawa. But instead what we did was at it wider and looked at our other treaty partners. Why would we do this just for Atiawa and not for Nahapu and not for Natitoa? So we actually, despite some of the little um, speed bumps along the way, we, ha we have extended that further to all three iwi, and I think that was the right thing to do. So I think um, my colleagues around the table that will be supporting this, and I hope that those that don't um, do see value in it in time. Councillor Buzzle. I'll just be very quick because I just wanted to really support um, some feelings of um, from Janet, um, Councillor Holborough, and also um, Councillor Coates. In reflection of my first training, which was last training, and we had representatives around around the table, and um, they shared often a wealth of knowledge that um, that many of us were unaware of, and they bring about a absolute richness and um, and different historic values and I think with having three iwi around the table they absolutely represent um, the Maori world view which I, I feel is really important so um, I just wanted to, to add um, my feelings on it that, it that it is something that we need to treasure and listen to and uphold and we need to um, be be that inclusive and have people around the table that um, represent our, our Maori and, and iwi community. Thank you. Kirsten, do you want to speak? Oh, kia ora. Thank you. Yes, I'd just like to um, um, a couple of things. Just to clarify, my earlier comment about just learning something recently was about learning about uh, some comments about the review. It wasn't to say that we've only just learnt about this review having been done. We've um, we've been kept well informed by the iwi partnership team. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's been quite an important issue um, because it's affected Te Whaka Meninga or Kapiti so much. Um, so we have been kept up to date. And we would like to, um, so yeah, so my apologies about um, any confusion that may have come from my earlier comments. Um, now, we have been kept up to date. It's been excellent to hear all of your comments today. And yeah, pleasing to hear that some of you would like to move this along faster. And we would certainly support <laughs> any recommendations to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we would like to acknowledge Te Atiawa for starting this process 
and the council for the way in which you've responded to it and reviewed it and look to um, look for ways in which you can improve the relationship and and yeah just on a just a little little note that it it is it is is it is well needed um, it takes a lot of time and energy and a lot of other discussions outside of here to find out you know inform everyone of of the things that are on the table and then have the discussions and bring that information back and then go back and forth and keep up to date with all the different things that you're familiar with um, so so it is well needed and yeah a little bit overdue and it it will be great for this council to get back into that progressive mode with this as we have been doing with other things Thank you. Thank you. Um, Denise would just like to add can I just carry on? So it's Denise Harper speaking Denise. now. Uh, kia ora uh, Very briefly, um, I just want to thank, um, uh, I, I guess endorse Kirsten's comments, but, but thank Council for being brave enough to go in this direction. Um, and one of the things we share at Ngahapu or Taki with the rest of our iwi of Ngāti Rauko Kitatonga is that essentially our iwi law has spanned three different, I think, three different regional councils, um, local councils. Um, the experience we've shared in, in, in barely a year since we've been involved um, at Te Whakamuninga, me personally and, and Kim, um, is that we know that the, 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 I guess the progress we've made with KCDC in the short time we've been involved with Ngahapu Otaki, uh, leaves our whanaunga with, you know, of Ngāti Rauku ki Tonga actually amazed at how much progress we made. So, e mi ana ki a koutou ki, ki te kaunihere, mi ona kaimahi katoa. E, e ngā kaunui ana ki ngā, ki ngā kaupapa me ngā take, um, a iwi a mana whenua. Um, you know, tauhau mātou ki a So we've been strangers to one another before sitting down at the table with, with all the staff. Um, other than perhaps Wayne Maxwell and a couple of others who, who we met in, in other roles. But to say that the willingness to participate at the table, the generosity of time, yeah, says that people know how to manaki people. So when you're generous with your time to one another, then manaki tanga is being extended. I want to thank Council for being generous of their time to Ngahapu Otaki in the last 8 to 12 months because it's been significant and we may, yeah, we've taken some quantum leaps. So we probably overlooked some little people in our backyard camp um, in terms of the Otaki Community Board, but we did say that we shouldn't fill the roles on the Otaki Community Board because we have a role um, where we can voice uh, you know, our concerns and our needs. But we've said to Shelley last year that we'd be happy to participate where the community boards think we could be helpful. Yeah, there, there, is a, there is a matter that we need to get together on soon um, yeah, for the wider benefit of Otaki, but... Um, me, kia koe, uh, me tō tīma ki konei, and, and to, to all the team within the council, we just want to thank you for all the support because we have made some significant progress for our people in Ōtaki. And we need to get there quicker, but I'm, I know we've made progress, so tēnā koutou. Kia ora. Um, that brings an end to the debate. What I'd like to add to, in conclusion, before we put the motion or the recommendation to vote. You know, it's interesting, um, Martin, you talked about, you know, there's Maori, or Matawaka, and then there's uh, Tangata Whenua, Mana Whenua. Mana Whenua are Maori. You know, you, so there's a maori that goes right across. And the fact of the is Maori are a minority in this country. And if you look at democracy as rule of the majority, there is a saying, there is also something called tyranny of the majority. I know that. And therefore, the difference does it make for Maori, for Matawaka, for Mana Whenua, for Tangata Whenua, is the treaty. This is the only place in the world where a minority group has got treaty rights that makes them equal partners to the Crown. Nowhere else. And we know recently, we, over the Maori War debate, 
my friend also said we want to strengthen our treaty relationship first that is the strongest weapon they've got the strongest ability to shape the destination they want to go to that is the one the umbrella that protects maori generally in this district madawaka so therefore that's that's the point that's the strongest point and so you you be remiss in your responsibility to see to say oh, i'm not going to vote for this because uh, it doesn't include maori yes it does they are the strongest weapon you have to protect your rights in fact i my, as a minority i hide under their umbrella for them to understand manaki tanga minority groups like myself they are my strongest umbrella and the treaty relationship through legislation is the one that's making the huge changes we talk about the assimilation of majorities assimilating minority groups through the legislative interchange uh to the treaty exercising the treaty powers can i say that i have not come across a situation where a minority group can assimilate the majority through legislation that's what's happening i support that because this is creating a new zealand identity which is unique aotearoa new zealand or new zealand aotearoa i like aotearoa new zealand so I raise my case and I thank you all for those who are supporting this. So I'm going to put the recommendations A to G with the slight amendment to the date on A11 to change to July 20 22. Moved by the mayor, seconded by James Coots. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those against? Division. All those in favour say aye. Put your hands up. Uh, Councillor Compton, Councillor Buswell, Councillor Coots, His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Halliday, and, and Councillor McCann, and Councillor Had Holbrook. Holbrook, sorry. Councillor McCann and Councillor Hanford. Yes. And the noes: Councillor Provanoff, Councillor Elliot, and Councillor Randall. and councillor halliday carrot thank you very much thank you um i am now going to take a short break short break and then the then the, yeah 252 and then general chair now down helmet said he wanted to lean He, helmet said he wanted to come in. <laughs>